Hello, I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, where we connect into a matrix of newsmakers to get to the heart of an issue. And watch out, they've got to answer in 25 seconds or less, or else. Let's take a look at that issue right now. In the movie business, the red carpet galas may still be glamorous, but underneath it's the big squeeze. DVD sales plunge while legal and pirated downloads soar. And no wonder. With broadband speeds ever more turbocharged, movie fans are increasingly turning to the Internet, legally or illegally, to see the latest blockbusters. The movie business is scrambling to adapt, seeking alliances out of self-defense. So are retailers. Tesco just bought most of Blinkbox. Netflix is the rage in the United States. But the payoff per download is far less for the filmmakers. What does the big squeeze mean for the business and for the quality of the films? The web has shaken up movie making, allowing more diversity. But how do you make a film pay off when it gets to the red carpet and the silver screen? Now wired into this edition of the network are, here from the European Parliament, Anna Silver, head of the media unit at the European Commission, with a budget of over 100 million euros a year to promote film and other media in Europe. In Stockholm, Rick Falkvinge, founder of the Pirate Party, with members of the European Parliament as well. It champions the rights of Internet users, though has been under fire from authorities over some of its tactics. And in London, Nick Powell, who's producer of more than 50 films, including The Crying Game, and director of the English National Film and TV School. Nick, let's start with you, first of all. How devastating could movie downloading, pro uh, uh, illegal and illegal, be to the movie business? Illegal downloading will be absolutely devastating. Legal downloading will be great because it's the most efficient and cheapest way yet found by the industry to distribute its movies. Aviva, let me ask you, um, this downloading issue for a lot of movie companies is quite a struggle. How do you see it? We see the use of these new digital technologies as an enormous opportunity for European cinema. And to that end, we're supporting both new business models like Power to the Pixel and several video on demand platforms. OK, but Rick, how do you see this? Uh, this is an opportunity for a lot of people to download illegally. Well, first of all, Hollywood posted record profits in 2010, beating the previous record year of 29, beating the previous record year again of 2008. So I don't really see an industry in crisis. But at the heart of the issue is that what we are demanding is for the same laws to apply online as they do offline. And that's not really that hard. You, okay, you can. Rick. You can take a copy of, a, of a something and put it in the mail. Nobody can open that. The same rules should apply on the Internet. Okay, uh, let's, let's go uh, back to Nick now. But Nick, uh, you've been to count a number of times. You said about 25 times. I've been there about 10 times. I've seen that dash for cash. And, and could downloading, again, legal and illegal, be the death of Cannes and other film festivals because a lot of those blockbusters depend on a lot of money? Yeah, but Cannes not sustained by blockbusters and, uh, you know, Cannes will survive because films will continue to be shown in cinemas, however else they are distributed. Television hasn't got rid of it, nor of any of the other media, nor the Internet in terms of cinema. But the business models may change. OK, but Aviva, haven't, haven't you had, uh, you've been uh, trying to use uh, millions in guaranteeing uh, movie funding. Isn't there, isn't this dash for cash increasingly intense and isn't that in part because of downloading? No, I don't think it is. I think you have to look at the structure of the industry, which is changing intrinsically. But at the moment, the old business models are the only way to fund cinema. We've introduced a new media production guarantee fund. But the work that we're doing, as I said, on video on demand and on the new business models is where the weight is going to move in the future. We are supporting distribution okay. by all means, but maybe in the future it will only be digital distribution. Okay. Okay, Aviva. Yeah. So, uh, Nick, what do you what do you think about that? Um, and the fact that th there's a lot of criticism of the movie companies not adapting, just as the music business didn't adapt, and they took on Napster and lost. Yeah, my my point exactly. The uh, although they eventually did kind of win, they lost so much in the in between time. Yes. That there, there is no question that if the film business does not learn from the mistakes made by the music business, you know, it will have a major impact, both at the blockbuster level and at the independent filmmaking 
level. So uh, we absolutely must learn and use less of the stick and more of the carrot. It means basically the industry has to, okay. to compete with the pirates. Okay, Nick, uh, let me go to Rick there in Stockholm. Now, you have uh, sympathy, empathy for movie pirates, for downloading, for, Ill for uh, free downloading. Isn't this going to be to destroy the movie industry in the long run? Uh, how, how do you defend this kind of a thing? It's more about distribution models. The, the incumbent industries are doing everything they can to lock down by bypassing them, new distributions that bypass them, to 250 million Europeans. File sharing is not a crime or evil, it's a good deed. Yet it's described by a problem by the politicians, and I think they can discover that this particular problem has the power and the, and the will okay. to vote them out of office. Okay, Rick. Aviva, l let's go to you. And again, you were in Cannes. You saw this. Uh, th this uh, with tighter budgets, with tighter movie budgets, uh, there's a, there seems to be a trend for fewer films, a number of blockbusters, fewer indie films, uh, and in part because uh, downloading is 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 cr is bringing in less revenue. Do you see that? What kind of a squeeze do you see? I don't think that's true. Whilst the U.S. film industry shrank in terms of the number of films over the last five or six years That's since right. the economic downturn. EU cinema didn't. We went over the bar of 1,200 films last year. And why is that? Because in some respects it's easier to make films because of digital technologies. And if I could just react on something that was said before, I think we need to be careful about drawing parallels between music and cinema. The economies are completely different, and the size of the budgets, even for an EU film, are okay. considerable compared to a, a song or an album. Okay, uh, Nick, you see a number of all different kinds of movies being made. Uh, you've been behind a number of different movies. Uh, do you think that maybe this, uh, the fact that downloading is bringing in less cash, uh, at the moment anyway, is, is a needed correction because there are so many of these blockbusters sucking up so much money? Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's, there's no question that, 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 that you, you, the DVDs have fallen off. You know, it hasn't yet been pre replaced by legal downloading. So, you know, there will be less cash, which means people will have to adjust. That means, you know, maybe lower salaries for the big stars. That means using the cheaper production methods. And I just must say to Rick that I don't see movies ever resulting in people voting politicians out of office. You know, I think it will be slightly okay. more serious issues. Rick, how do you respond to that? Well, we do have two people in the European Parliament, and politicians did lose their jobs because they didn't understand these issues. So I think that's a good, that's the response to that. It's already happened. Uh, Viva, what's your opinion on that? I think that the Parliament should represent as many interests as possible. Whether people lost their jobs to elect those two people is another question. In terms of illegal downloading, I think we also have to remember that. 50% of the copies that circulate leave the studios before the films are even released. Right. Right. So that's, that's, this is a growing problem, isn't it? Um, and how can a movie make money in this kind of, a, uh, of an environment? And, and, and let, let, me go to, let me go to Rick. Uh, how do you justify this kind of thing? Aren't you guys going to destroy the movie business? Well, it's a civil liberties issue. If a business can make money without dismantling our fundamental rights, which is essentially what the copyright industry is demanding here, they need, then they need to find new ways of making money. And there are plenty of ways to do that out there, which is being exploited by indie film, film, filmmakers. It's That's just really that easy. you can't make money okay. the same way you've always done, and nobody has the right to demand that. Little indie films. Real, really quick, Nick. What do you think about uh, that? I, I, told, I, I totally and utterly disagree about this civil liberties thing. It's also a right to own uh, what you create. And that's just obviously fundamental to human existence, art, commerce, everything. And, uh, and this, so I, don't, I can never agree with Rick on this. Okay, Nick, thank you very much. That's all the time we've got for now. I'd like to thank our guests, Aviva Silver, Rick Falkwinger, and Nick Powell. I'm Chris Burns. And until next time, thanks for connecting to The Network.